Only one, only one cigarette, Chesterfield, gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. By Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that cruises cake. Yes, Chesterfield's a milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. So, so, open a pack and give them a sniff, man, you smoke them. Someone wait for me. This is Ken Carpenter welcoming you to the Bing Crosby Show for Chesterfield, produced and transcribed in San Francisco, with John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Collins of the Mayors and Bing's guests, Mr. Bert Wheeler and Miss Teresa Brewer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that eminent authority on menswear. The fashion editor of the Hobo News, Bing Crosby. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ken, I'll speak to you later. About that very slip introduction. Since you're belaboring my wardrobe, it may surprise you to know that I've just received a very flattering offer from Esquire magazine. You got an offer from Esquire? They want me to renew my subscription for another 12 months. <laughs> The way you dress and huh? the trouble you have with hotel clerks. I'll just not get into that again. <laughs> yeah. well, you do, though. We covered that. But the way you dress and all that, I'm surprised that Esquire would even send you a form letter. Well, that isn't all. You know, out of my recent reverses has come another great honor. What's that? Well, I've been designated a man of distinction by the Oshkosh Bagosh overall people. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let this matter drop now. True, I did have a little trouble getting in that hotel in Vancouver. That's true. I won't deny that. But I've been here in San Francisco for over a week. And I've had absolutely no trouble with my room clerks. Yes, but you're living in a seaman's rescue mission. Uh-uh. I checked out of there this morning. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were very happy there. Why'd you move? Last night, yeah. three of my roommates were Shanghai. <laughs> Tonight it ain't gonna be me, because I ain't gonna be there. Oh. No. Thing, I thought you were the adventurous type. You often told me that you'd like to go to sea. I would like to go to sea, but not with a lump on my head. Well, you have a point there. I don't want a lump on the point either. <laughs> All I can say is... I don't know. <laughs> All I can say is, by moving out of the seaman's rest, you probably missed a wonderful free ocean voyage to Hawaii or Tahiti or Australia or somewhere. Oh, no, Ken. The way things are breaking for me lately, I'd probably be shanghai on a boat that's bound for Stockton. <laughs> I was wondering, Bing, now that you've checked out of the Seaman's Rescue Mission, uh, would you mind telling me what hotel you're stopping at now? I'm, I'm dickering. Oh. Places. This morning, I wired several hotels saying that I wasn't too dressy, but I did need a room. Any answers? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I received a very friendly wire from Dan London, the amiable Boniface of the St. Francis Hotel. Oh, that's great. Uh, what did Mr. London say? Well, I've got it right here. It says, uh... Bing Crosby, care of Continental Trailways Bus Station, San Francisco. Care of Continental Trailways Bus Station? <laughs> if I don't get a room, boy, I'm blowing down. <laughs> well, what does Mr. London say in his wire? Well, it's really a very lovely wire, Ken. It says, Dear Bing, the St. Francis doesn't care how you address. Come as you are, but don't come here. <laughs> It's a reply. That's <laughs> quite cordial, too. Mm-hmm. Affable. Yeah. But you don't read it all. <laughs> Ken, I think the folks have been regaled enough with my current housing problems. And just to show everyone that I'm light in spirit, gay, and ebullient, I think I'll bust into the house. That's uh, how high the moon, huh? Far, the dark. 
darkest night would shine, you would come to me soon. Until you will, how still my heart, how high the moon. telegram here I want to read to you. It's mighty important to you as a smoker, so listen close. The telegram's addressed to the Chesterfield people, and it says, a panel of five, all members of the faculty of the College of Liberal Arts of the University of New Hampshire, has just completed for our foundation a survey and appraisal of cigarette advertising. The advertising copy of five cigarettes was subjected to scrutiny and study. You'll be pleased to know that only Chesterfield advertising was judged entirely free from misleading statements or false claims. This is the unanimous opinion of the panel. The honesty of your advertising is indicative of the honesty of your product. It's signed by W. Keith Simpson, director of the Newington Foundation. That telegram lays it right on the line, doesn't it? That's right, folks. Here's what it means to you. When we say that Chesterfield gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, you can believe it. And when we say that Chesterfield is the best cigarette for you to smoke, that's the truth. The straight story. Always buy Chesterfield. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present a little lady. The senior aisle has made it tremendously popular all over the country. But she's been with us several times lately and always scored a sensational success. I have reference to Miss Teresa Brewer. Hey, Teresa, what are you going to sing for? Is this a little high for you? No, you want to get down there and get dead <laughs> aim on this mic, you know. I broke in with hope. I learned you've got to get right in there. <laughs> What are you going to sing for us, Teresa? Hmm? Would Alexander's Ragtime Band be all right? All right. Practically dynamite the way you do it. You can really kick it around pretty good, I'm sure. Well, I'll try. Well, that's good enough for me. We await your opening measures, Teresa. <laughs>
and I lost the page. <laughs> I got it. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to sing next. Better not sing at all after that. Teresa, that was wonderful, and thanks very much. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to... I just got to have a go at the great folk song, which is currently standing lovers of such Americana right on their ears. Mr. Trotter has composed a rather fine orchestral background, I believe, for this uh, piece of memorabilia. <laughs> Ready? Here we go, John. Go right ahead. weeks ago, tonight's uh, guest appeared with us, and we've invited him back for a return engagement. His recent appearances on some of the top television shows have made him a current sensation in TV. It is now our pleasure to extend a warm welcome to this lovable veteran of show business, the ever-popular comedian, Mr. Bert Wheeler. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and Ben, you should never introduce a guy to an audience as a comedian. They're supposed to find out that for themselves. <laughs> well, Bert, if you don't want to be called a comedian, how should I introduce you? I... Well, just say I'm a friend of yours. A friend of mine? Yeah, and if they think I'm a friend of yours, they won't expect much. <laughs> oh, you're me, getting then. all in a tizzy here about nothing, Bert. I'm... If I put you in a spot, I apologize. I'm sorry I ever called you a comedian. How do you mean that? <laughs> I mean about the way I introduce you now. I idea you're sensitive for a guy that's been around as long as you have. I don't understand how you can That's be another so... thing I'm sensitive about. Yeah. Well, how long have you been around? Uh, you, you really want to know, Bing? Yeah. Well, as long as we're here in San Francisco, why don't you just ask me, were you born before the fire? Huh? Go ahead and ask me. You <laughs> think I'm laughing because I, I know what's coming. Uh, <laughs> I don't get into anything like that. You, right. you say, were you born uh, before the fire? I say that. Huh? All right, go ahead. All right. Uh, go ahead. Bertram, were yes. you born before the fire? No, behind the piano. Oh. <laughs> Go 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that joke will give you an idea of how long I've been around. <laughs> and you know, Bing, I'm beginning to feel my age, too. Get out. Yes, I oh, am. Oh, no. I always thought that you birds being energetic, a ball of fire, a little human dynamo. Oh, right? no, not anymore. You should have heard me puffing trying to make that hill on Main St- uh, Mason Street. Right? <laughs> Mason, Mason, Mason Street. Everybody puffed going up Mason Street, up that hill. Yeah, but I was going down. Going down? Yeah. In a taxi. In a taxi. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be worried about it. Probably an old cab. How do you like San Francisco, Bert? Eh, it's all right. <laughs> you know, you sound like you got a little beef, a little something personal against the city. Well, Bing, uh, maybe I am a little bitter. What happened? You see, Bing, one time when I was here, I met a girl. Uh-oh. Well, I, I was crazy about her, and, well, it turned out to be an unfortunate love affair. What happened? I married her. <laughs> you, you can't blame that on San Francisco. Hey, maybe you're right. Hey, you know, come to think of it, she was from Oakland. <laughs> yeah. How could you tell? Well, uh, this was before the bridge was built. Yeah. And every night when she left me, I had a greaser for the swim home. <laughs> But, Bing, I've got to say, this is a wonderful town. Well, Bert, with all your years in show business, I'll bet you've played here many times, huh? Yeah, I've worked here, too. (laughs) That's what I mean. You know, Bing, the last time I was here in San Francisco, I was with a vaudeville show, and what a time we had. I'll bet. Oh, gosh. You see, one of the acts on the bill was Harry Greenwood and his trained seal. Oh, yeah. And this was his hometown. Greenwood was from San Francisco, huh? No, the seal. Oh. (laughs) Oh. And, boy... When you're from San Francisco, these people really treat you right. You should have seen the welcome he got. Yeah, I'll bet he had a lot of friends on Fisherman's Wharf. He even had friends under the wharf. <laughs> <laughs> that was always a big event when Greenwood and his train seal played in San Francisco. You know, his family lived out here in the bay on a big rock. The seal? No, Greenwood. Oh. <laughs> The way that guy used to walk out on the stage reminded me of Bob Hope. Greenwood? No, the seal. <laughs> yes, those seals do walk yeah. funny. <laughs> you know, everything they do is funny. Yeah, thing. Thing. thing in Detroit, I shared a dressing room with that act, and what laughed? Oh, must have been oh, a riot. <laughs> it was hysterical, the way he used to roll over on his back and drink like a fish. The seal? No, Greenwood. Oh. <laughs> I've been in a lot of shows in my yes, time. Yes, you have, no question. You know that. Yeah, right. But I want to tell you, by the time that show headed back east, you never saw such a pathetic character. Really? He get loaded in every town. You know, mm-hmm. missing shows. Yeah, I understand. Getting kicked out of a hotel. Oh, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> How do you like this? What do you do? Chasing chorus girls all around the dressing room. Oh. I'm telling you, Bing, he was positively disgusting. Bert, you're not going to trap me again, though. Was this Greenwood or the seal? Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you nailed me. You grabbed it. Say, you got us all keyed up with this suspense. I, I can't rest till I get the answer. What, whatever happened to the seal? Well, Bing, it was just terrible, huh? but, but it wasn't the seal's fault. Huh? You see, this Greenwood was one of those guys that didn't like to drink alone. Oh, I see. And he hated people. So? Well, a seal got the heisting a couple oh, himself. belting back a little. You know, who do you see, uh... But at first, he was just trying to be social. Oh, oh, I see, yeah. Now, you know, Bing, you seldom ever see a seal drinking. But when they do, they're murdered. <laughs> well, I'll remember that. It's certain. Anyway, Bing, the seal had to give up showbiz. Wasn't that tough? Oh, murder. You know how a seal catches a ball on his nose? Yeah. Well, he got so he couldn't even catch a ball anymore. Well, what finally happened to him? Last time I saw him, he was playing right field for the San Francisco Ball Club. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, and you know, he, he is so discouraged yeah. after each game, you can still see him heisting a field. Oh, he's still back. <laughs> the field? No, let the old do it. <laughs> Oh, 
Bert, I appreciate it. This is wonderful, but I'm one fellow who's in no position to start knocking last place baseball things. I've got to be very careful. I... Well, listen, Big, maybe we'd better quit while we're winning, huh? Well, it's been a lot of fun, Bert, standing here gabbing about the old days, no matter how fantastic. How about cutting up with an old song? Could you handle an old ditty with me? Okay. Take the tenor, but I'm feeling a little low this evening. Okay. Take the top. You ready, John? <laughs> Ohio, I got the cutest little old my own. There ain't nobody half as pretty as she. She's just as sweet as can be. And jumping jeepers, creepers, she's crazy for me. And what an old my own. The only one I've ever met who thrilled me so. She's about the cutest thing that I've ever oh, seen. Oh, really? Oh, milk and honey, if you know what I mean. And, and when we go tomorrow, it's free till I get back to Ohio. I get so old, my own. She is the only one who ever thrilled me so. She's got a family that's loaded with moo. Tell me more. But where the dickens did she learn to woo woo? She's got that old, my own. Huh? Uh, say, Bing, yes, uh, how are you planning to spend Father's Day this oh, Sunday? Oh, Father's Day, that's a quite a big thing at the Crosby Menage. Yeah. I get to sleep as late as I want to, then the kids bring me a big breakfast in bed, ham and eggs, cereal, waffles, pancakes, sausage. Oh, wonderful. What do you do when you get up? What else? Wash the dishes. <laughs> well, I know one gift that'll be on that breakfast tray, Bing. Right you are, Ken, a carton of milder Chesterfield. The cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The biggest plus in cigarette history. Yes, science discovered it. You can prove it. Chesterfield is the cigarette that leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Let's not forget Chesterfield's mildness, Ken. 1,547 tobacco growers say that Chesterfield's milder aroma means a milder smoke. And since Sunday is Father's Day, why not give Dad those milder Chesterfields in our swell new gift carton? Sure. Pick one up at your dealer's. Pop's a great guy and Chesterfield's a great smoke. It's a natural. For Father's Day and any day, it's Chesterfield. <laughs> By Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfield's are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. So ho, open the pack and give them a sniff, then you smoke them. by John Trotter and Tom Adair. We like to encourage local industry. Any town is Paris when you're young. In any sky a dreamer's moon is hung. Every love the one love that you swear you'll never leave And the gypsy spell of spring Is yours to weave All the world is magic When you're young And every song Ever sung. Every street is lover's lane where wishing stars are hung. And any town is Paris when you're young. Every love's the one love that 
lover's land Where wishing stars are hung Yes, any town Is Paris when you're young Thank you. And that's it for the team. My thanks to Teresa Brewer and Bert Wheeler for joining up with us tonight. It's wonderful to see you, Bert. Thanks, Bing. Who's with you next week? Next week, uh, Bert Teresa's coming back. Also, a couple of old buddies of mine, Tommy Dorsey and Joe Venuti, will be carried aboard. <laughs> that sounds like it might be very pretty. Oh, we hope so, Bert. Ken, would you step here for a minute? Just... Right, Bing. Can. Friends, remember to ABC always buy Chesterfield. Chesterfield's world famous ABCs mean more today than ever before. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Yes, you get all that, plus the added pleasure of no unpleasant aftertaste. And just another quick reminder for Father's Day this Sunday. Pick up one of those gift cartons of Chesterfields. When you give Dad Chesterfields, you're giving him the best. Good night, folks. I'll see you next week for Chesterfield, the best cigarette for you to smoke. The Main Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, was produced and transcribed in San Francisco by Bill Morrow and Myrtle McKenzie. Tune in next week and you're bringing his guests, Miss Teresa Brewer, Joe Venuti, and Tommy Dorsey. Mm-hmm.